Hey, hey, everybody, this is Larry. This is day one of the August League Code Day Challenge. Hit the like button, the subscribe button, join me on Discord. Let me know what you think about this farm. And yeah, we've, what is our streak? Our streak is 1217, uh, which is 1217 days. So we'll keep on going. Let's start with together. Let's kind of, uh, you know, let's all do, you know, whether you're. You have a new streak or you've been on a long streak, let's do it together. Uh, I have a Discord channel uh, where a lot of people also post their code uh, for either comments or just to kind of, you know, keep responsible and stuff like that. So, uh, so yeah. Uh, and you may wonder why I'm on the contest page if you haven't seen it before. Uh, is that sometimes there's this button on the upper left. Up the left, there's a luck plus you go to 10. If you click on it, you get 10 lead coins. What do you do with the lead coins? Who knows? But if you do want those lead coins, then go get it. All right, today's problem is 77 combinations. And it seems like I haven't done it before. Given two integers n and k, return all possible combinations of k numbers chosen from the range 1 and n. We may return the answer in any order. So this one, um, you know, n choose k grows pretty big so i imagine the the constraint is yeah uh relatively small without even looking at it um if you're using python uh well i mean there might be in other languages as well uh probably uh there are a lot of um uh, library things that does this for you i think in python is iller tools i'm not sure that there is thing in thing but it is also one of the probably earliest thing that you might um uh, you might consider uh, doing for, uh, I mean, by itself, it might not be super interesting, but it is one of the first ways to kind of learn about recursion and kind of both recursion, a sort of backtracking and just trying everything kind of type of brute force. And those three combined is why um, this is pretty fundamental. Is it a medium nowadays? Eh, it's tough to say, but uh, as problems keep getting tougher and people have, depending on who, uh, who, who you surround yourself with, have a weird definition of what's, you know, the difficulty. But, but in any case, is it, is it learnable? Yes, so definitely uh, do that. And on interviews, I can imagine it, it comes up uh, here and there. Maybe not combinations by itself, but definitely things that uses it, right? Like we said, brute force um, and recursion and stuff like that is pretty useful. Um yeah, the way that I always write these, uh, so there, there are two, um, so I think in, there are two uh, big things about it, um, or two uh, big things, <laughs> that's that's barely English. No, I mean, um, I think the thing that you have to kind of think about, and in this time, uh, this particular thing, and they tell you the, it in the, uh, in the example, is about you know, it, it when you think about it in combinatorics, there are two two major things. That one is combination, the other is permutation, uh, and I guess maybe it's the other one is uh, picking things with and without replacement, right? Um, well, combination obviously is one of those. But so those are like variations on the same idea on, on this brute force that we talk, uh, very briefly talked about, right? So definitely, uh, if it comes up, definitely make sure you practice enough so that, and you kind of get enough of the new ones. Um, I hesitate to say, you know, they're templates or patterns, but I do write them the same way, so maybe, you know, it is what it is. Uh, and it's okay to kind of, you know, work on your own distinct style as long as it's a way that you can learn, right? And the thing is also, um, uh, I, I think I, I get this a lot from people asking about, um, you know, like you step away for a couple of months doing something else because life happens, uh, and then you come back and you're like, wow, everything is tough again. Well, the, that's where the thing with between like memorization and learning, right? Um, you can memorize things and things get forgotten all the time. But if you actually learn it, if you learn the idea behind it, one is that, you know, you could come back to and pick it up very quickly. Uh, maybe it's a little bit slow, like, you know, your, your finger's a little bit slow, but there, there's not enough memory, uh, muscle memory there. Uh, and then the other thing is also that if you actually learn the algo and not necessarily the template, um, you're able to do this in any language, right? Um, you know, I, you know if, if you watch any amount, I 
do maybe 95% of this in Python, some percentages in C++ and C and Java and all these things. Um, but, you know, like, and yeah, maybe they're not the most efficient code in the language, but I am able to do them in multiple languages. So yeah, okay, now let's, without further ado, let's, uh, that, that's a long intro, a long rant, but let's get started, right? Uh, so here, when we pick up a number, it's already, it's, we don't replace it, so that's a thing, and also that we, um, the order doesn't matter, right? So, or... Yeah, yeah, the order doesn't matter. So yeah, so we just have to keep track of that. So the way that we can do it is, as I said, is with recursion. So, so that, uh, the way that I do it anyway. <laughs> uh, so yeah, so maybe, you know, you just kind of do a construction thing. You have um, you have a current, current uh, number that you want to index by, and then you have number of numbers left over. And these kind of construction also comes into play uh, with the parameters of this uh, recursion uh, with respect to dynamic programming, right? Once you kind of get more familiar with uh, how you kind of construct these recursion and different ways of doing it, then dynamic programming or memorization more specifically, I suppose, uh, will come into play and you ha you're able to kind of focus on finding the states and not really worry about the recursion part. So definitely everything kind of goes together and everything is... Uh, a building block to, to some other things. So yeah, so the, maybe current is a wrong word, but yeah, right? So yeah, so then first, there are a couple of ways that you can actually do this with respect to the memory construction. Uh, in this particular case, you can really do better than the size of the output. So you're able to get away with being a little bit sloppy uh, in the sense that, like I said, you, can do, you have to return the size of the output. So the size of the output is actually in this case pretty big anyway so yeah or well, relatively big compared to uh yeah so yeah so then now maybe we do something like construct uh the current is we start with an empty index we start at number i guess one and then left we have k numbers left so then yeah if left is equal to zero, then we're Gucci, we're good. Then we want to append the current array. Uh, and remember, don't forget this thing, otherwise you're, you're copying just, or you're appending just a reference, and the reference, you at least the way that I'm writing it, I intend to change all the time. There are different ways of kind of, you know, creating more memory and stuff like that, but, you know, you just have to kind of really understand what you're doing. Uh, otherwise, we construct a current, we do we have to sort it in any order? Oh, in any order, okay, fine. So then here we let's just say we take the current number and then we don't, right? So there are only two choices: we take the number and we don't, right? So that's the recursion brute force. Uh, yeah. But of course, when we take, we want to append the index, uh, and then we remove it, and then that's that's mostly the idea. And of course, you have to make sure that if index is greater than n, then we return because that's too much. That's pretty much it. Mm. Oh, this is obviously, uh, well, you, if you don't take the number, you want to go to the right. But, mm, yeah. Hmm. Did I uh, miss the number? Missed all the fours. Do, 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 do. Hmm. How do I miss the four? If its index is greater than n, right? All that said, and I still don't get it right, so I don't know. Yeah, maybe I'm just off by one. But why? Dun dun dun. Index plus one. Huh? <laughs> Today I am confused on a easy bomb. Eh, these are the days. Or uh, wait, uh, now I lost it. Hmm. There's also another way of writing with for loops, which we can go over in a sec, but uh huh. I was gonna do this first.
Tell me why. Oh, 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 I'm dumb, I'm dumb, I'm dumb, I'm dumb. This has to be afterwards, because... Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, so, so apparently, even if you have done this enough times, as I bragged that I did, or whatever, uh, you, like, as you can see, a simple uh, order of operation thing, and I was just not thinking. Uh, because the way that I usually write this, to be honest, is that uh, maybe inst instead of grouping it in the base case, which I kind of did, um, usually I write it down here, um, where it's not technically the base case, it's more like if this one is greater than n, then we return, because, uh, yeah, yeah, uh, and I think maybe that's the way to think about it. Uh, Oh, wait, 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 no, 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 index is greater than n because this is where we're impending. But actually, the way that I wrote it is kind of awkward. I think that's why. I think if this is the... Mm, I think what... I, uh, it's a little bit awkward today. Maybe it's an awkward day. Because usually I write it in the if statement like before and then I just don't do it. Like if index plus one is greater than n and then, then there we can keep it, right? So we can do something like... Um, I think I just kind of wrote this awkwardly. I think I usually structure kind of like this as an if statement because the way that I did it here is almost like a, a negative thing. Um, but that's really no excuse. It's just, I don't know. Huh. Huh. Oh, well. But yeah, let's give it some mid. Uh, it should be fast enough, but it may be a little bit too slow, so we'll see. Oh, so it was fast enough. Okay. Uh, but there is actually another way of writing it. Uh, and this comes in handy with respect to be, um, you know, depending on how you write your problems, right? And 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 the the reason why I kind of want to point this out this particular way is that uh, when we do these kind of constructions, uh, you know, for combinations for this particular problem, it doesn't matter that much, maybe because well, this one AC then fast enough, but but um, these kind of variations may come in handy when it comes to doing, like I said, dynamic programming, because dynamic programming sometimes uh, order dimension and order spaces and, you know, different nuances uh, matter, right? For this particular one, what is the, the time complexity? Actually turns out to be 2 to the n times n, um, which is a little bit slower than we would like, even though there is some self-printing structure, so you never actually get to that worst worst case so maybe it's just two to the n and then n is 20 so eh, like it's borderline good it's borderline okay with this problem but it's not necessary you know enough of the ideas right so the other thing that so here you can kind of think about it as we we um we we choose to kind of make a decision on a choice on every index right um here we go okay so for for each number, I mean index is a weird word, but for every number we gotta either take it or don't take it, right? That's basically our, our construction here. The other way that you can do it is that okay, for each left, do we want to um, what number do we, let's say we we force ourselves to do a minus one all, every time? What index do we force, right? So that's the other way to writing it is that okay, um, let's say we have to pick a number. What number do we pick now, right? So another way that you can think about writing it is, um, well, they just did it everything, right? So then now we can do for uh, um, x in from, starting from index to n plus one because we want to go from one to n inclusive. Uh, then we can do this number, right? We could do construct current. Uh, we do x plus 1 because we just consumed x and then left minus 1, right? So then here we do current dot append x plus 1. Oh, no, no, no. Can do -do -do. And so that's the, another way of writing it as well, right? Uh, give us a minute. Oops. So yeah, um, I mean, the, for this particular problem, uh, I... The new UI actually confuses me. It's a slightly faster, but um, but yeah, that's also another way of writing it, right? Um, and there are some nuances with this one as well because using doing it this way, um, 
doing it this way, you're guaranteeing that every loop we, we decrement left by one, um, but we also only, uh, yeah, uh, uh, you know, do the number of index. So this one, the complexity is actually closer to, to n choose k, which if you know your maths, is actually uh, converges to 2 to the n at some point, but it is like a, a little bit faster, right? Uh, or eh, maybe converge is the wrong word, but but it, you, you may know that the sum of n choose n choose k for k from 1 to n is 2 to the n, right? So yeah, so knowing that, you know that this is going to be slightly, or you know, a reasonable amount faster, maybe not, not uh, depending on what index and left is, right? Because if index was 20 and that was a small number, the last one would have been kind of expensive, but this one may be a little bit more cheaper and so forth, right? Because um, you, you're limited now by the power of whatever. Okay, so this is combination, and also honestly, if we're talking about combination, we're pretty much done, but, uh, but one thing to kind of maybe easy to mess up is that here, the x starts at actually index, right? So that, because in this case, uh, there are a couple of things to do it with basically, saying that um, another way of kind of articulating what we're doing in English is that, uh, or given the problem first, right, the problem is that we don't want the things to be unordered because, you know, these things are, uh, uh, you know, different combinations. But what that actually means is that, is that in a way, you want to impose a... Uh, <laughs> In a weird sort of way, you want to impose an order to the answer, right? Um, this, I mean, at least it makes it easier. You don't have to, but that's the way that I think about it. Uh, because if then now all the all the outputs are kind of in in in, um, it's almost like you're for a given combination, you're you're constructing the canonical, the the uh, the normalized combination, right? Which is defined by the uh, the sorted, the sorted, uh, sorted combination within itself, right? I uh, hope that makes sense. And if that makes sense, then that, that, uh, if you understand that as what you're trying to do when it comes to combination, then it, it makes more intuitive as to why we're here we start at index because now we're basically creating a, uh, an increasing array uh, for inside one combination, right? So that's basically the idea. The other thing is that, of course, uh, that leads to itself to a very straightforward permutation type thing, or even just where the order matters. If you just like, you know, then you, this goes from zero or something, and you have to keep track of the numbers you've used. Uh, here, we don't have to keep track of the number of we used explicitly. You know, we kind of do with retract to index because we assume that everything that before index we cannot use. But if you are, if you need to go back, then you have to keep like a used uh, boolean away or something like this. Okay, I mean, this is just a general kind of, you know, brain dump today. Uh, hope that was useful. Uh, let me know if you have any comments. Let me know what, what you've been working on. Let me know, uh, I don't know, just anything, really. Uh, that's all I have for today. L have a great week. Uh, have a great month. Uh, I'll see you soon. Uh, what is my usual thing? <laughs> stay good, stay healthy, to good mental health. I'll see y'all later. Take care. Bye-bye.